Hello there and welcome to our 65th online service. It is a privilege to have you there on the other side of the screen. We have an amazing service planned for you today. We've got John Watt leading us in communion. Victor is bringing us a word on rebuilding others. It is amazing, incredible and challenging word. So you're in for a treat today. I'm just going to hand over to the worship team. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises. He hears faith. Oh. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room. Where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears Praise the Lord. 
prepare our hearts and minds to take communion. I'd like to read a couple of verses from 1 Peter chapter 1. My amplified, amplified version. Chapter 18 and 19 says, For you know that you were not redeemed from your useless, spiritual and productive way of life, inherited by tradition from your forefathers with perishable things like silver and gold. But you were actually purchased with precious blood, like that of a sacrificial lamb, unblemished and spotless, the precious blood of Christ. As we look at these emblems this morning, I want to share a thought that maybe help us appreciate the full value of these two small emblems which represent so much. Have you ever had something of extremely high value stolen, lost, or in my case, decided to sell it? Only to end up having to buy back the exact same thing. Back in February 2018, I finally decided it was time to crack open a Telemundi jar I got from my sister Angela for my 40th birthday <clears throat> back in 2011. I had been saving most of the £2 coins for almost seven years and it was time to crack open the jar and spend the entire savings plus some extra on a new guitar. At that time I was playing guitar most weekends in church the thought of a new guitar for, for using in worship seemed like the best thing to do. After spending most of the afternoon in a guitar shop in Edinburgh, I finally decided on this Taylor acoustic guitar made of Hawaiian koa wood. Not only did it look amazing, but in the hands of a very average guitar player, it even sounded pretty good as well. Eight months later, lying helplessly and partially paralysed in a hospital bed. Thinking back now, the only negative thought I remember having at whole time was when I suggested to my dad, if my current situation doesn't improve, I'll never play guitar again. On returning home from the hospital, I was so keen, but also so afraid, to pick up the guitar and see if I could still strum a chord. To be honest, it didn't sound all that great, but in that moment, any sound at all felt really good. As the weeks and months passed, the same guitar that had filled me with such joy as I played it in worship started to become the main source of so much frustration. Why could I no longer play the chords that before were so easy? Why would my brain not tell my fingers where to go and what to do? The more I tried, the more frustrated I became. The only way I could see to remove this sense of frustration was to post the new guitar for sale on eBay. Not surprisingly, it sold within 24 hours. Out of sight, out of mind, or so I thought. Only last week, after almost two years since I sold the guitar, did I finally manage to replace the guitar with the exact same model. But inevitably, inevitably, it cost far much more the second time than it did the first. And this time there was no Terry Mundy jar to break open to cover part of the cost. It really hurts to have to buy back what you already previously owned. Probably more so if it was lost or stolen. Back in the very beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, they were created perfect, without sin. When they were deceived in the Garden of Eden, sin created a division between God and man. God's perfect creation, made in his own image, created from the dust of the ground, was going to cost God the ultimate price buy back, to buy us back to that place of connection, to that place of freedom from sin. These emblems before us this morning help us to remember the ultimate sacrifice through a broken body and the shedding of blood. This was the ultimate cost 
God could pay to buy us back through the precious blood of Jesus. We are that individual item of high value that in God's eyes has increased in value and worth over time. God was willing to pay the ultimate price for. As we take communion today, let us be thankful and remember the ultimate price that was paid for each one of us on the cross at Calvary. Feel free to take communion yourselves as a band now leads us in worship. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is with you just now, it's great to, to see you as we continue our Rebuild series. I hope you enjoyed the worship just now. Um, the band are doing a great job for us. There's a little bit more of that to come at the end. And wasn't that a great communion from John? God's pursuit of man. It's brilliant to see the example of that. And we'll touch base on that again just at the end as we talk about how important we are. Um, to God. 
Um, well, I hope, I hope uh, you've been enjoying the, the Rebuild pro, uh, series that we've been doing. Pastor Ben's message last week on unity, an um, absolutely brilliant message and importance of working together, loving each other, taking care of each other, uh, ensuring that there's nothing between us. And of course, God commands a blessing from unity. The, the short message today um, that we've got for you it really is a little build on that. It wasn't. I didn't realise Ben was talking on unity last week, but as God just put this into my heart, um, it does actually dovetail with Ben's message and maybe gives us one or two practical things that we can do in our pursuit of unity. Um, and I want to call this rebuild relationships, rebuilding our relationships, ensuring that we are putting others first and building into others' lives. It's so important. In 1990, there was a film that came out. It was a blockbuster at the time called Pretty Woman. Um, you can go and watch it if you want. I'm not advising necessarily to watch it, but it was a, it was a, it was a good movie, actually. And during that film, it, it was focused on the relationship of this guy and, and, and this girl. Um, and it was an interesting relationship and in how they met. It was, um, it was, that's really what the film was about. Um, the main character uh, in the film was played by Richard Gere. And he was a businessman, a very successful but ruthless businessman. He would buy businesses quite often from people that were in trouble. He would break them up and sell them for lots and lots of money. He was very successful at that. And the lady in the film, played by Julia Roberts, she, during the, during the, the storyline of that, she challenged him, why don't you build into the business instead of breaking it up build so that's what he did in the in the storyline he built into this business and of course it was successful it's very easy to break things up you don't need much brain power or much effort to break things up it's such a natural thing for us as human beings to do and especially others we're very good at tearing others down and breaking them up but I want to challenge us today. Can we be different? Can we be purposeful in our relationships? Can we try and make the difference to this world by building others? Our, we, we say here in, in Frisborough, we love God, love people at the church. That's what we try and do. We love God, love people. In the journey of loving people, you can't love them if you don't strive to build them up. If you don't strive to work hard to see them move on, succeed, go further. And that's what we want to do with people. We want to see them reach their potential and be the best that they can be. And it's a joy if you can help that, support that, be on the sidelines, putting your arm around about them and help them to find their potential. Let's not be people who are breaking others down. Uh, not only in the Bible, but in this world, the most influential people were often people who built others up. Moses, he led people. Joshua, he led people. You know, we've got to try and lead people forward. If you look at the world today, Winston Churchill, he led a nation during a difficult time. It's great to be able to show people, encourage people, get behind people and show them a better way. So why don't you be an encourager and lead people on? In fact, it's actually quite lazy thinking when we don't do it. You know, there's many people out there that they promote themselves by putting others down. I, I, I don't like that at all. And I see it often in business, not so much in church, obviously. No, we do see it there too, unfortunately. But people actually try and promote themselves by putting others down. In the UK, um, we're well known um, for our humour. We take the mickey of ourselves. And by doing that, you can give others a laugh. And I actually quite enjoy that. Maybe that's a, a part of humour I like, when we're a little bit self-critical. Um, and in the process of being self-critical, we can give others um, a chuckle. Um, I do struggle with others that are uh, uh, self-boasting a little bit. But hey, let, let's, um, let's put others first. It's a brilliant biblical principle. Matthew 7 um, tells us that uh, we shouldn't be pointing out the faults of others. It describes it as a, a speck in their eye, blocks their vision. We shouldn't point out the faults in others when we're blinded ourselves. Let's put others first. Let's encourage others. Let's build them up. I want to take you to another um, verse in the Bible just now. It's Psalm 8 
and 4. This is one of my very favourite verses in the Bible. Um, there's many favourite verses um, in the Bible. It, it's, it's an amazing book, absolutely brilliant. But this is one of my favourites, and it's, it's very revealing. It's a brilliantly comforting verse. And there's times in our life we need to just get a bolt hole somewhere to cling on to something. And this is one of those verses for me when that moment is a bit difficult. It just gives me something to hold on to. And it says this, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. I find that verse incredible because it's talking about God and the context of God here is the creator of the whole universe. We had an eclipse this week of the, the moon and the sun, um, and the scientists and everybody were so excited about it. People were out watching it, and it was an amazing uh, thing to see. We're understanding more and more and more about the universe we're in, how big and how vast that it is. In the next few months, um, some of the world's richest people are planning trips into space. We've had pictures sent back from Mars recently. The universe that we're in is unbelievable. The world that we're in, the delicate nature of how it just fits together and how everything has its moment and its time. Us as human beings, the complicated, how we are so complicated um, in our thoughts and everything at times, we're a nightmare sometimes, aren't we? A complete nightmare. But you know something? The delicate nature of all that creation has been put together and the person that did that cares for me. It blows my mind to think that through. So if you get nothing else from this today, please get Psalm 8 and 4, which is the God of all creation cares deeply for you. He thinks you're special. So in a few minutes, let's uh, try and go through the, the three points we've got for you today. We're going to talk about rebuilding our or your influence, how we impact or, or have a, an influence on those around about us. We're also going to have a little chat, a little discussion on family and friends. Those are in a closer circle. We'll do a little MOT check on how our relationships are there. And then we'll finish by just uh, reminding us how is our relationship with God and maybe put a little challenge into that as well. So first of all, rebuilding our influence. As we hope the world is getting back to normal and we can start to see people's smiles again and look forward. I've missed people's smiles. I guess you're the same. Whether it's been at the supermarket checkout or people we work with, our family and friends, we long to have that interaction again with the freedom of closeness and no barriers, for example, masks. But as we get out there and interact, can I challenge us to, to ensure that our influence in people is there? Can we work hard to, to make sure we're positive towards others? We're called to be that. You know, we're called to be the light in the world. We don't want to be a negative influence in others. We don't want to be, um, as we talked at the start, someone that breaks down others. But we want someone to encourage and to support others in their journey. So let's work hard at having a positive, influential relationship with the people in our daily uh, lives. Whether that's the school gate, the gym, the golf course, the, this class, the university, let's have a positive moment with those we are around. It's so easy to break down the barriers and find ourselves in a negative situation, but let's think that through. Let's work hard and be purposeful in that relationship moment. Jesus himself, it's a great principle that Jesus demonstrates. He took time with others. There's a lovely story in John chapter 4. We've got the Old Testament, we've got the New Testament, and the fourth book of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John. John chapter 4, Jesus is at the well. He meets um, a lady there, and he really endeavours to have a positive influence on her life. There was so much wrong with that meeting, actually. Jesus really shouldn't have been talking to that woman. She was a bit of a social outcast. She had to go to the well at midday because that was the only time she was allowed to draw water. She was like, we go to the, the tap and we have a glass of water or we go to the supermarket and buy a bottle. But back then, she had to pull the water from the well. Jesus went to chat to her. He didn't go to her and start saying, hey, I'm a big deal. I'm Jesus. I'm the son of God. He was a big deal. 
He was Jesus. He was the Son of God. But he didn't go with that sort of attitude. He went very humbly to the lady because he wanted to hear her story. He wanted to connect with her. You know, we, we need to take that on in our daily lives. As we meet with people, everyone's got a different story. Everyone's got a different perspective. And maybe we should be just a little bit slower to judge that person. Listen to their story. Listen to their background. Hear and see how they view the world. Then maybe we can start to have a positive influence on their journey, on how they see the world. We can maybe start to present Christ to them. It's so important that we have influence with people. If we don't have that influence, we, we can't show them Christ. So let me encourage you today, let's work hard on our influence. As this world starts to get back to normal, as things start to change, let's really be purposeful in building into others' lives and we can have an impact um, for Jesus with them. Second, second short point for today is, how, how are we with our friends and family? How's your relationship? I've got to be honest, um, as I was preparing for this this week, um, often you're challenged on what you're going to speak or lay down um, uh, in a situation like this. And there has been two occasions this week where the words I've been getting ready to lay down today and the thoughts in my heart have been challenged strongly. And, and I needed the help of others really to come alongside me with a bit of patience, a bit of grace to help me in relationship with others. I'm, I'm laying bare my frailties in that one. I think if it had been left up to me, some of the relationships might have been strained this week. And I wonder if it was a little test um, about this message. But I'm thankful to one or two others that have just come alongside me this week and just helped that. And all has been well. We should keep daily short accounts with others. Um, I, my little sister and my older brother, I was going to say big brother, but maybe I shouldn't say it that way. My older brother and my little sister are absolutely brilliant. They, um, I'm a nightmare, I'm always too busy to do things, but they are very good at keeping the three of us together. We would fight like any other children would when we're in the family home and, and we would squabble. But since we've left the family home, we've never had a wrong word between the three of us. And I give them the credit for that, I really do. But it's a brilliant place to be with them and they've worked hard at that. And I just wanna challenge us, you know, can, can we be in a place with our friends and our family that we are in good relationship with each other? It's so difficult when you spend time with people to keep that place. Um, but the, the reality of it is, if we want to show God love, have a good outlook to the world, we can't be fighting with those that are close to us. It, it doesn't do well with us. Love God, love people. We've got to love the people. So I'm just going to be blunt with you this morning. If you've got a relationship fracture with someone that you know, fix it. You need to go and fix it. And I know it's tough. I know they've wronged you. What they said wasn't right. When they said it was a bad moment, they shouldn't have done the actions afterwards. I'm innocent. Yeah, you may be completely innocent. The reality of this is your relationship is more important than what has happened. Your ongoing future with them is more important. Let's just get it fixed. Um, someone once told me, you know if you go with the right heart to fix a relationship, if you go there and you ask the person, look, let's get this sorted, let's get this fixed, let's move on together, and they say, no, not a chance, no way. If you walk away saying, well, I tried, I tried, okay, it doesn't matter, you went with the wrong attitude. If you walk away from that situation, heartbroken, done, you're gutted, because you wanted it fixed. You went with the right attitude. Let's go to people that they've maybe wronged us, we may be completely innocent, but let's get it fixed. Our ongoing relationship is much more important than past hurts. And if you do go there and it is fixed, what a joyous moment. A moment of reconciliation, there's nothing like it. So for those that are with your friends and your family, your closer circle, maybe people that you used to be so close to and you're not anymore, go fix it. Unity is a wonderful thing. It actually, the Bible tells us that bitterness decays the bones. 
you know, wear something else. Broken relationships don't look good on us. Let's change those set of clothes. How's your relationship with God? I'm going to talk about, I guess, three different um, groups of people here very quickly. There's many groups of people, but just three very quickly. But I love the story that John gave us through communion. What, what a great story that was, that God is in pursuit of us. The God of all creation is in pursuit of us. Um, we, we need to have a relationship with Jesus. That is the most important relationship that any of us can ever possibly be in. It's the one we need to spend most time in and give most care and attention to. Um, Jesus, um, you, you may accept he was a man that lived on earth. Some people have tried to say he wasn't. There's so much evidence to say that he was here about 2,000 years ago. Um, he was a real person. There's, there's a lot to point to that. We believe he was the Son of God. As a result of that, he came to this earth to, to chase us. He came to this earth because he wanted to have relationship with us. He died on a cross for us. He died that we can, we can live, actually. It's, uh, it's an interesting uh, expression, that, isn't it? One, someone else died so we can have life. But that's what God did. He sent his son for us to die for us so that we can reach out to him and have him in our journey, in our relationship, in our life. And, and what we get from that is we actually believe that life is eternal. There's more to this sort of 70, 80, 90 years, whatever we live. There's more to it than that. And I believe in the heart of everybody, we believe in hope that there is more to it than that. So what our relationship with Jesus does is allow us to have an eternal relationship with heaven itself. What a great privilege that is. You need to get involved with that. You know, we, we here at the church would be only too pleased to point you in that direction. I also want to talk to another group of people, and it's maybe a group that they know a lot about Jesus. You've maybe come through the church. You've maybe spent time in the church. You've maybe even said, yes, I want to have that relationship, but it's all gone a bit cold, and it's just a bit on the back burner. It's not your priority in life anymore. As I was, as I was preparing for this, there was three words that came to me at this point, and it was, it is time. You know something? It is time. It is time to draw back to God. It is time to go back to your first love. It is time to make that uh, relationship again, rebuild that relationship. We shouldn't be in a place where we're going to wait until we're a little bit older. We'll wait until I'm maybe retired. There's a situation going on just now. I'm too busy with work. It is time. Let's rebuild that relationship with Jesus. And I also want to just challenge um, a third group. And that may be a group who are absolutely, it's going brilliant with Jesus just now. It's going brilliant in your relationship. I want to encourage you to dig even deeper. We're so excited just now. Our church building is starting to, to rise from the ground. And if you go down there um, in here in Fraserburgh, you'll see the, the drone footage last week. But if you go to Fraserburgh just now, there's even more steel work up and it's starting to take shape. It's all very exciting. But at this moment in time, there's probably as much steel below the ground in the foundation of that building as there is, we can see, on top of the ground at this moment in time. I want to encourage you to dig deep in your relationship with God. Put down strong foundations. It's that moment where no one sees. Like the foundations of the building, they're just there. Nobody will ever see that, hopefully, again. The foundations are there. But dig deep in your quiet time with God. Dig deep with heaven and lay strong foundations that really will um, help you in your journey with Christ for a long time. Ben spoke last week about unity. And he says, where there is unity, there is a God commands a blessing. We want to see unity in this area. We believe that God is doing something really special um, in, in the Northeast and across the world at the moment. We really believe that. So we want you to be part of that. If you don't know Jesus, you get connected. It's so important. If you've lost that love, it is time. And for the others, dig deep in your foundations, because God is going to use you for something absolutely special. 
We want to have an influence on people. We want people to um, be impacted by our positivity on their lives as we speak into their lives, as we encourage them, as we point them to Christ. Keep a hold of your influence. Don't let that wane at all. Be purposeful in rebuilding your influence with people. If you have a broken relationship, go on, get it fixed. Just fix it. Your future relationships are much more important than the past hurts. It will do your health the world a good. It will do your mindset the world a good. And honestly, you'll increase your influence in such a mighty way. And invest in God. He is limitless. Absolutely limitless. There's no time or effort that we can spend into him that he can't outweigh that in such a mighty way. He is absolutely fantastic. Thanks for listening. Um, whether it's good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is with you, it's been great to spend a few minutes with you. Can I pray for you for one quick prayer um, and then I'll, I'll hand you back over to the worship team. Then Mark will, will finish off with this at the end. Father, I want to thank you for you and who you are and everything you are to us. Lord, I want to pray that people will make brave decisions. They will action um, brave moments towards stronger relationships, being an influence on people and mending what is broken. And Lord, I also pray um, most sincerely that people will connect with you in a mighty way, that they will build and care for others as you care for us. We thank you, Lord. We love you. Amen. Have a great day. And I'll hand you back over to the worship team.
thank you Victor for that challenging word, rebuilding others. Peace with people is worth the effort. As a church, we wholeheartedly believe in the power of prayer, which is why last week we launched outdoor prayer walks in Fraserburgh. There are three routes for you to do that you can do at any time throughout your week. It's the perfect weather for it, so why not go out, go around, go past the building, and just pray while you're on these routes. And we also have our prayer Zoom at 8 o'clock this Tuesday. I'd also encourage you, if you haven't yet been into an in-person service, please get booked in. Booking opens up at 2 p.m. today, so make sure you get booked in at Eventbrite for the in-person services. That's all from us. We'll see you next week. It's so important that we love people, care for them, encourage them, build them up, and everything that... Julia! I'm trying to do a message.